Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, I'm Steve Benson, President of the Imperial Irrigation District Board of Directors. Thank you for responding to our petition and holding this initial public workshop. Um, this is an important issue to the IED board and with me here today are all four of my fellow board members. Uh, Mr. Matt Desert, Mr. Bruce Kuhn on my left, uh, Norma Galin Sierra Galindo and Director Jim Hanks. So before I tell you about IED's mission, let me tell you a little bit about myself uh, and our board. I'm a fourth generation resident of the Imperial Valley. I manage my family's 80 year old forage and vegetable farm where we're currently implementing on-farm conservation to meet the QSA. I am a proud father of four and uh, I look forward to the future for those children in the Imperial Valley. Our board is publicly elected by all voters in the Imperial Valley and represent five distinct districts. My district includes the southern and western shores of the Salton Sea and Director Hanks is the eastern and other half of the southern shore of the Salton Sea. Uh, our board has distinct backgrounds in engineering, education, law enforcement, agriculture, and construction. And to the IED's mission, our mission is to deliver water to the farms, cities, and industrial users of the Imperial Valley. We're over 100 years old. We also serve energy to ratepayers in both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys, and where we were one of the first to implement hydropower in California. So what happens at the Salton Sea is of paramount concern to the people who live, work, and raise families in both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. It is our duty as board members to ensure a positive future in the region for providing food and fiber to the nation, offering a healthy quality of life to our residents and, preser and preserving the unique environment that we call home. I think today it's 95 degrees. That is why we are here before you today. On behalf of my fellow board members, I wanna to extend to you a sincere thank you for holding this initial workshop I also want you to know that we are committed to working with the state, all stakeholders to move this process forward. And I'm pleased to introduce IED's general manager, Mr. Kevin Kelly, who will be speaking to you on behalf of IED. Thanks. Uh, thank you, thank you, President Benson. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Marcus, members of the board. I also wanna thank you for uh, uh, holding this workshop on uh, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Um, nothing clarifies the mind of an Irishman like having to wake up early on March 18th. <laughs> I want to speak to you about uh, linkages. Uh, you'll hear from others today, I'm sure, that uh, this distinction between restoration and, and mitigation is being purposely blurred uh, by IID. And I would suggest to your board that uh, mitigation only makes sense if it fits into a larger framework of restoration. Uh, this first image here uh, is obviously of California. I want to return to it later, but before I do, um, I'd just like to say that as, as a native of the Imperial Valley, uh, I've always been proud uh, to be a Californian. Imperial County is the 58th of the 58 counties in California. But you can see that it's a long way away uh, from you folks here in Sacramento. Uh, were it not for the uh, resources that this part of California has and that body of water there, the Salton Sea, um, it might be that you just ignored Imperial County. Um, I'm gonna suggest to you uh, why that can't be the case anymore. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the Salton Sea, and you can see both the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. In reviewing the, the written comments that were submitted to your board, I find that our QSA partners uh, are all 
uniformly in favor of restoration. But restoration in the abstract. It's easy to be for a restoration plan uh, as an abstraction because nobody ever has to do anything. So we're 12 years into the nation's largest agricultural to urban water transfer. We've generated upwards of three million acre feet, either for transfer or mitigation, uh, make up to the river. That would fill Folsom Reservoir three times. So the scale of not only the, the water transfers, but that body of water uh, is something that you really don't appreciate uh, unless you're actually on the ground and, and can see it. And our petition asks you to come and see it. I would invite you to do it um, before a summer. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I, I want to go to the next slide. So this distinction between restoration and, and mitigation, um, I'd invite you uh, to have uh, something of an exchange on this if you'd like to talk about it, because uh, it may be that we, we uh, get to the heart of this quicker uh, than with me just uh, prattling on about it. But the reason that we are harping on restoration, it seems to me there are two uh, schools of thought uh, on this problem at the Salton Sea. One is the actual problem at the Salton Sea. And the second is that IID won't shut up about it. And the reason that we won't shut up about it is because in 2017, the Salton Sea falls off the cliff. And if you live in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys, then you're taking a chance. You didn't have anything to do with the nation's largest agricultural to urban water transfer. You're just, you live there. And the people who live there are mainly um, people of color. They work in agriculture. Nobody checked with them, right? The reason that we talk about restoration at the Salton Sea is because it can be done. Not for $8.9 billion. You'll hear from the resources agency here today, and you should ask them about that $8.9 billion plan. Because I'd submit to your board that that plan is actually an impediment to a meaningful discussion about what to do on the ground at the Salton Sea. Nobody believes it'll ever be built. Uh, we have our own ideas and idea about what to do out there, and it's mainly driven by uh, the exposed lake bed. What do we do about air impacts? We think that those uh, renewable resources that are unique to the Salton Sea ought to figure into the restoration of the Salton Sea. We'd like for that to come up uh, naturally in this facilitated dialogue we're calling for in our petition. Mitigation, if it happens exclusive of any restoration plan, is, is simply chasing after the wind. And by restoration, I'm using the term of art that was uh, uh, adopted by the state. We're conceding that the Salton Sea is going to be a smaller body of water. The hydrology of the Colorado River won't support a sea the size it is today. We're mainly concerned about what happens at the, uh, at the exposed lake bed. I was here, I was actually here when the State Board uh, did its 2002 order. I remember that process. And I would not presume at all that that uh, iteration of your board uh, was so cynical as to order a 15-year 
uh, mitigation water uh, regimen uh, simply to preside over the death watch of, of the Salton Sea. I remember it being an earnest effort to provide the state sufficient time to, to uh, arrive at, at, at a bona fide restoration plan. Why restoration? Because between 2003 and 2017, IID will have delivered 800,000 acre feet in mitigation water to the Salton Sea. If that wasn't to uh, provide a, a, uh, a basis for restoration, then what good purpose did it serve in a drought? And of that amount, nearly 400,000 acre feet is set to be delivered to the Salton Sea in the next two and a half years. Mitigation without restoration makes no logical sense in a drought. The single greatest threat to the long-term viability of these water transfers isn't IID's petition. It's the Salton Sea. It's the unmet obligation by the state of California at the Salton Sea. I realize it's awkward for your board as a, an agency of state government uh, to call out that government. But you know what? Your board's already taking on big issues, right? Well, we, we brought you another one. That's why we're here. Why restoration? Because IID never would have entered into this transfer agreement but for that unequivocal um, promise by the state. And it wasn't an empty promise. It wasn't an illusory promise. It was a, uh, it was a firm commitment and it was relied on by IID. And after that uh, water order by the state board in 2002, ID was called on to vote to approve the, the quantification settlement agreement and it failed three to two. A year later, with unbelievable pressure on that elected board, it approved the deal, three to two. Uh, members of the state board, I'd like to introduce the swing vote. <laughs> Both times. Uh, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Kuhn is here today. He's going to speak to you, um, and he's going to bring a, uh, a real world and a real politic dimension to that time frame. Uh, Director Kuhn. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, as Mr. Kelly stated, uh, <laughs> I was president of the board at that time. I always voted last. And the first vote on this thing, it was, I had two yes and two no, but I didn't have assurance that the Salton Sea would be taken care of. Had I had the, re the, the um, assurance that the Salton Sea would have been taken care of, I would have voted then, but I didn't and I hadn't got it. So to say, uh, was I in a position of pressure, no person in the world should be sitting there with two no, two yes, and be the single vote. And I submit to you today, no doubt in my mind, on the second vote, when we were in the governor's office and Richard Katz was uh, his, uh, ch I'm not gonna say he was chief of staff, but he was certainly in, in charge of the negotiations. and. I actually got to like him pretty well. He's, he's a very knowledgeable, very, very funny guy to be around, cowboy boots and all. Uh, we were in negotiations. The sticking point on this thing was the Salton Sea. 
and I will always recall, I was one of the main negotiators, and I said, we cannot have a deal unless the Salton Sea is taken care of. And it will not be taken care of by local people because it, it's just too much of a financial burden for, for the small amount of people that live in the area. We couldn't do it, still can't. And I'll always recall so clearly, Richard jumped up, he said, then the state will take it. And I said, cowboy, you got a deal. <laughs> and from that, from that exchange, the state, and it was asked here today, how did, where was that mitigation or when did that come to be? I, I am the last person in the world who's supposed to be here today because this was su such a contentious issue and I was running for re-election and I knew if I did cast a yes vote on this, I was gonna be fired. And I was. So for me to get reelected and be back to, to be before this board for this presentation, I truly feel I should be wearing a hockey mask because he's back. <laughs> anyway, I am the least um, likely person to be here. I am glad to be here. The mitigation, the state became contractually obligated with mitigation through those negotiations with Richard and uh, Department of Fish and Game, uh, Metropolitan, San Diego, Coachella, we were all there. And we were in the governor's office. At one time, the governor himself was in attendance. And after the changing of the governors, uh, there was another meeting where uh, Governor Schwarzenegger was was uh, in attendance. So it went to the highest echelons of state government that the state of California was made aware that they were both responsible for the mitigation, but simultaneously, before the vote, before the vote was taken, the state had signed on as a signator of the contract to be contractually obligated, leave no doubt in your mind, the state is contractually obligated for the mitigation arising from the transfer. But simultaneously, and in order to get my, I assume to get my vote, the state legislature passed the Salt and Sea Restoration Act. And in conjunction with the transfer, the contractual obligation for, for the mitigation of the transfer, and the passing of the Salt and Sea Restoration Act, then and only then did they give me the confidence that something was gonna go forward. Now, the night I made that vote, I, I submit to you, I have family that farm in that valley, and they did not like this thing. I had, I had fourth generation farm people that I was working with. My company's 75 years old. I took it over from my dad. I, to say that I, it was looked upon with favor just is a huge understatement. It was looked upon as one of the worst things that could happen. Unfortunately, because I negotiated this thing, I realized the ramifications for not. So I had to lay my personal beliefs aside and I had to vote what was right. And with the, with the assurance that the state had passed the Salt and Sea Restoration, plus the fact that they were contractually obligated for the, for the mitigation of the transfer. I laid my personal beliefs aside, I laid, I laid friendships aside, and whether, whether we agreed with my decision or whether we disagreed with my decision, I felt it was the right thing to do. And I can tell you unequivocally, there's not a person in this room, no one, if you look around, not one person, me, anyone, nor you, would be here if it weren't for me. One vote. <laughs> and I, it, it impacted 35 million people in seven states. It was gut-wrenching. I lost friends, I lost business. But it was, it was in the best interest of the state and, seven, um, and six other states that I do this. It was the right thing. So I will leave you with this. I knew if I voted yes on it, I was gonna lose the election. I knew it. But it was the right thing to do. So I'll say this, I would rather 
lose an election for doing what was right than be reelected for doing what was wrong, and I paid the price. And how I got reelected again, I do not know. I am just proud to be here and I'm proud to represent the people I do. Again, right is right and wrong is wrong, and there are consequences for being right, but if you're right, you take them. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director Coon. I, I spoke to you um, at the outset on linkages. Um, I'd also like to uh, speak about an important linkage in our valley. Um, for most of these 12 years uh, since the QSA was signed, um, IID and our own County of Imperial have been at loggerheads. We've been litigants. County has sued. Uh, just recently, uh, Imperial County and IID resolved that lawsuit. And we are full partners at the Salton Sea. You'll be hearing from them uh, at length, but I want to call on the county's uh, public health officer, Dr. Stephen Monday, and he's gonna talk to you uh, a little bit about the Salton Sea. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow Go board ahead. members. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow board members. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Um, as we've already noted, I am actually a medical doctor and um, I am trained in three specialties, public health, environmental medicine, and medical toxicology. Um, so I understand the science behind the health impacts of the environment and, and what those impacts are in the community. My role as the health officer for the County of Imperial is to protect and hopefully improve the health of the residents of my community. And every resident in that community is my patient. And I'm here because I'm gravely concerned for their health uh, and the future as we try to continue to improve their health. I uh, noticed that a few people mentioned this morning already that uh, we know that asthma is a problem in the Imperial Valley. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, I'm sure you're probably also aware of the fact that one of the things that uh, correlates with asthma is air pollution, in particular particulates. And there are now many, many, many studies that have been done that confirm that relationship. Um, it is my belief as a physician who takes care of patients and as a medical scientist that the health of the Salton Sea is going to directly be correlated with the health of the residents of my community. So I think it isn't just the issue of the water um, and the recreation and the mitigation. I'm here because I'm concerned about the people, the residents of my community. We have the highest asthma rate in the state. As has already been mentioned, we have made some inroads, but unfortunately our improvements have been small. And my concern is that if we do not do something to impact the amount of sediment that would be increased by the shrinking of the Salton Sea, that the increase in air particulates will directly and adversely affect the health of the residents of our community. What's particularly troublesome to me is that children are even more adversely impacted than adults. It affects everyone, but children seem to be more susceptible. So I believe there is no doubt that with worsening air particulates that our asthma rates will worsen. It isn't just asthma. There are many studies that have shown that in adults, for example, if they have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema as an example, that they also have worsening when air pollution worsens. Believe it or not, and I still don't necessarily understand why, but we have many studies that have shown that particulate air pollution uh, affects heart disease rates. Um, again, I don't know why, but it's definitely been shown that that's the case, and it affects total death rates as well. So I'm here basically to represent the health of the community. And I think it's really important to understand that this does actually impact every single individual that lives in that community, because if we don't do something to solve this problem, the air pollution is going to increase and it is going to worsen the health of the residents of my community. Th thank you, Dr. Monday. You. Um, I think that the, the big takeaway there is, you know, how do you balance 
um, economic and environmental considerations. Well, you do that all the time, right? I mean, that is at the core of what the, the Water Board does. I used to think that this petition, um, that the value in it was that it would finally force everybody to make uh, difficult choices. But you don't have to choose between this water transfer and the public health in Imperial and Coachella Valleys. I mean, you balance those considerations all the time. You're going to hear from others that mitigation and restoration are, are fenced off from each other. You'll, you'll be told that the QSA is silent on restoration, that that's a state thing, it's, a, it's, it's statutory. Well, the people that Dr. Monday's talking about uh, are going to be oblivious to that distinction. Right, there are people living, working, raising their families, and breathing the air in these two valleys. The QSA is not silent on restoration. The QSA, that, you know, sort of suite of agreements, I don't know which one it is, but one of them says that the QSA uh, uh, should be in, uh, it's premised on the QSA legislation remaining in full force and effect. So it's central to the QSA. Our petition says that the QSA should be implemented in its entirety. So what's the missing piece? You're, you're looking at it. And we're, we're saying that uh, by 2030, this is IID's estimate, we'll have 50,000 uh, and change exposed acres. You'll hear from Mr. Cohen later today, it's twice that. So who's right? All we know is that there's a whole bunch we don't know. But we know that the Salton Sea is already going down. Josh, this is the Red Hill, uh, or this will be the Red Hill Marina project. This area was uh, covered in water 10 years ago. And if you're out there and you take a look at it, you'll see the picture doesn't do it justice because it's a broad, swath of land. Now, others are going to tell you that the impacts of the transfer have been uh, completely mitigated one-to-one -one, uh, by this mitigation water. And, and maybe they're right, but after 2017, nobody has an answer. Nobody has a good answer. So, um, when you talk to uh, the resource agency today, I hope that you'll ask them how many acres uh, have been built out in the state's own state um, species habitat conservation plan. And I think that they'll tell you that none have. That's because we've mitigated a water transfer at a time of historic drought with water. And the water's been generated through land fallowing, not efficiency-based uh, conservation measures that actually create an economic stimulus in our uh, chronically underemployed valleys, through land fallowing. That 1998 IID San Diego water transfer, it expressly prohibited land fallowing. It was only with the, the uh, realization that the Salton Sea had to be dealt with that we ended up with a deal almost exclusively built on fallowing for the first 15 years. So, 
Uh, next slide, please. How many acres were fallowed? In 2014, we fallowed uh, 50,000 acres. This chart is supposed to show the uh, intersection between salinity and, and elevation. You can see that that's spread there roughly between now and 2020, 2025. Um, you've got basically a collision course. And you know what? Uh, it's important to note, we're not talking to you about uh, water quality because that one's too tough even for us. We're simply saying the Salton Sea is going to be smaller. Even if it's a third less the size it is today, it'll still be the, the largest uh, lake in California. That's how big it is. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the touching closing image. <laughs> I'd like to return to the first uh, uh, overhead. So this is California again. You know, California, to my mind, uh, people look to California to lead. California has this long, rich, progressive tradition. And it leads to enlightened uh, policy. The environmental movement uh, uh, came from California. This, this RPS and, and the, uh, the uh, climate uh, change uh, legislation in, in, in AB 32, those are all California uh, phenomena. Something like that needs to happen at the Salton Sea because uh, it, it, it's not going to be the uh, um, water transfers that are imperiled uh, because IID keeps insisting on something happening. It's because if the Salton Sea isn't taken care of, you don't have to worry about our condition in the, in the uh, petition. The Salton Sea is entirely capable of collapsing this exquisite uh, transfer agreement all on its own. In, in wrapping up, I'd just like to say to you that uh, about a year ago, I spoke to the so Southern California Association of Governments, and it was on, it was on Salton Sea, but it was uh, specifically about uh, a renewable energy and restoration initiative that we have with, with Imperial County. And I pointed out to those people, these are all the electeds in, in, uh, in local government in Southern California, that when I was a student in Los Angeles, there were only five or six days a year that you could see the San Gabriel Mountains. Now that was many years ago. It's not true today. The air in, in the Los Angeles Basin is appreciably, measurably better. Dr. Uh, Wallerstein is smiling now in the back of the room. Yeah. So, so a long way to go. South Coast uh, uh, certainly had a hand in that. But so too did those elected people. So, um, I would leave you with this idea. Uh, someone uh, once said, it's certainly not original to me, that the, uh, the moral test of government is how it treats uh, those in the dawn of life, uh, children. Um, how it treats those in the twilight of life the aged, and how it treats those in the shadows of life, the poor, the needy, and the powerless. Our valley doesn't have a lot of people. There's a lot of resources, not a lot of people. 
But California doesn't have to choose between the environment and the economy. You can do both, and I'd call on you to do it, and a good place to, be, to start would be to hold your next workshop at the Salton Sea. Thanks very much. Thank you very, very much. I have a question. Don't, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Question. If, if, uh, if I could, I'd li like to ask a question. Uh, we, oops, excuse me. Uh, we heard from uh, the Senator uh, Hueso and uh, also from Assemblyman Garcia uh, right at the beginning, who, s who uh, particularly the Senator, said he had stepped up to help pull people together, but what he um, found is that there was lots of people um, saying someone else should do this or someone, you know, someone else should be responsible. And, and so clearly what he was asking of us was that um, we're need, we, we kind of need to not exactly start all over again because we know do, we do know a lot more now than we did and a lot more has been done than was done before. But are, you know, is, is IID willing to do this stepping up and thinking um, about what more IID may have to contribute to the, the solution in addition to all the other people taking responsibility? Is that, a, is that an option that um, <laughs> your, your, um, uh, Mr. Coons or, uh, you know, and, and the new chair will uh, um, um, entertain? Yes, yeah, so uh, Vice Chair uh, Spivey Weber, that, that uh, question obviously cuts both ways. We don't believe that uh, more water post 2017 is the answer. Uh, as a matter of fact, we think that your board um, uh, would have a tough time with that. We know that the other Colorado River contractors would. Um, but IID is here. Uh, the whole purpose behind this petition uh, is to uh, no longer defer. So we are willing to participate in any uh, reasonable solution to find a consensus position. Uh, you know, every one of these QSA parties ought to be for IID's petition. Uh, shame on all of us for having waited this long, including IID. Um, so yeah, it'll take somebody making everybody come in a room, right? Your board's uniquely positioned to do that. It'll be awkward for you, um, but that's what we're asking you to do. Madam Chair, and I certainly agree with Mr. Kelly. I, I just want to reiterate, we are here today because we would like the promises that were made in 03 to be, to be honored. So when, when we're asked to do more, are we willing to do more to make this work? Yes, but the primary reason for us being here is to get those promises that were made in 03 uh, to, for the state to step up to the plate and take care of those obligations. So uh, again, yes, we're willing, but right now we'd like the state to live up to their responsibility. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I have a question, oh, and I know we don't, we don't want to take up too much yeah, time here with questions. Maybe looking but at the clock too much, but um, yeah. Well, j just quickly, if you could go through the uh, transfer and how um, you managed it as a district, uh, so that you had the least amount of impact. I understand uh, your position against land fallowing. Did you have to fallow any ground, and if not, how did you manage? Um, uh, to move forward with the transfer with the least amount of impact. You mean going forward? Since you've, since the transfer and going forward. Well, because of that 2002 order, when we've generated most of this water through land following. So it wasn't just to provide mitigation water to the Salton Sea. 
you, you need, what, what I think what, what you need to appreciate is that if you do efficiency-based conservation, you necessarily impact the Salton Sea, right? Because you're cutting off those return, those agricultural return flows. You become more efficient and you, you necessarily impact the Salton Sea. So IID for, for 12 years, arguably for you know, the five or so years in the run up to the signing of the deal, it's found itself uh, between the devil and the Salton Sea. So your question, uh, I guess the answer is, IID would like to transition away from land fallowing, do uh, efficiency-based uh, measures on farm. You know, our, our transfer deal is based on uh, subscription, where our water users volunteer to generate water and then we validate it and we, it's all accounted for at the river. That's the ideal. Uh, there'll probably always be some place in this uh, transfer for, for uh, uh, fallowing, but it need not be uh, uh, the uh, exclusive means of generating water. In fact, uh, that is a, uh, a um, uh, suspect means of, of generating water in, in this terrible drought. I think it's important to note too, as a board, that we're committed to spending resources and have been in our budgeting cycle. Um, the, this is a year where the transfer revenues exceeded our water sales revenues, but those are all being redirected into capital projects. From a system point of view, we're looking at canal linings, reservoirs, uh, siding reservoirs. Um, I think in the next five years, we're looking to spend uh, well over $100 million, and Tina Shields, our water manager, is here, and she's specifically attuned to those numbers. Uh, but myself, personally, as a farmer, I've been committed to installing drip systems, as have other people, pump-back systems. Um, there are limitations to that, and part of it has been through the litigation process, people are not willing to spend money uh, not knowing if the transfer is going to go forward. And I think that it has been a big issue, and with the litigation lifted, People are willing to spend that money now, but it's still a process looking through ETOs and what the transpiration rates are and other issues related to crops and specific soil types, fields, gates, record keeping. The idea is a 100-year-old institution has a series of different levels of record keeping, you can imagine, and every farmer has a unique system where he has one field or 50 fields off one gate. So it's really a matter of how do you keep those records and, and looking forward to transfer that water uh, through conservation has been the main means. Um, and that, that's what we're committed to doing as a district. I think farmers are. You'll be hearing from the Farm Bureau today. They're committed to it. Uh, the veg growers, they're committed to it. And uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to the transfer going forward in the Imperial Valley. I know I am. I have five new drip systems with five-year leases, and I have to pay those back. And if the transfers aren't there, then I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with my drip systems. But um, from the IED's point of view, long term we are committed to the water transfer as long as the other parties are committed to the restoration. And I don't see the IED committing more internal resources when we're focused solely on conserving water right now with those resources. If we have to go spend more money on the Salton Sea, I think that'd be really hard to sell locally and that isn't the deal that we signed up for. I'd just like to get a better idea about what's possible setting aside the cost. Sure. Um, uh, because I know that uh, you, you can't be 100% uh, efficient on all properties because it depends on the, the crop use and uh, ET rates and all that. But um, it would be helpful if uh, you could provide some information on what's your current uh, how many acres are on highly efficient um, systems now, and what could the potential be setting aside cost? Mm -hmm. I, I think, Ms. Uh, uh, Adamo, you'll hear from uh, uh, panelists today, uh, Mr. Cohen, who will tell you that uh, um, even though IID won't be sending as much water to the Salton Sea, that uh, the amount of water that's going to go there just off the farms and fields um, in that uh, agricultural sump that it's always been is, is enough water to do great things with. That what the Salton Sea 
uh, needs is projects, uh, not, not necessarily just wholesale delivery of water. It needs projects that fit into a broader plan, right? Because otherwise this incremental approach is just um, uh, chasing after the, the uh, symptoms. I know we're running behind, but, uh, but I mean, this is a key panel. I just, I'm just mindful of the time since we have so many panelists, that's all. Um, you mentioned restoration, and um, I guess to the extent that we can be succinct, I noticed in the in IID's letter that you uh, are not advocating the restoration as defined in the 2007 preferred alternative released by the resources agency, which is returning to the conditions found in the 50s and the 60s. What is your definition or your proposal with respect to what restoration means? Is it the 700 to 750 acre feet per year in normal, in normal years? I mean, what is your definition of restoration? Um, I think that's a key uh, concession that IID and others um, have already made, and that is the Salton Sea is going to be smaller. So there has got to be this overarching scheme that, for our part, uh, is mainly about what to do with that exposed lake bed. Right. But, um, but I think you'll hear from others that we have an idea about how to address those air impacts, but it's not our place to uh, uh, posit it to you. The onus is on the state to select, fund, and build a restoration plan. So 12 years into it, we've just been generating water through Fallon, right? It's been a crutch. And, and uh, um, so the Salton Sea can always depend on some amount of water to, uh, 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 for the future, uh, but it's going to be smaller. We're conceding that, and we're saying that let's all uh, talk about how best to uh, approach the problem instead of continuing to punt, which is what we've been doing for 12 years. <laughs> 